Hi everyone. So now we're going to talk about interacting objects. So we've talked about interacting objects before with respect to Newton's third law. So we're basically going to see how Newton's third law now. <laughs> Sorry, my dog's being silly. Um, so now we're going to be dealing with interacting objects, so applying Newton's third law to new types of situations and how we can use Newton's third law to help solve problems. So the first type of problem we'll be dealing with um, Newton's third law in would be objects in contact, right? So a situation or an example of this would be um, what you see in the figure here to the right. So we have a hand pushing on two blocks that are in contact with each other. Um, so this is a common form of interaction. It's when objects are literally touching each other. So they're in contact, direct contact with each other. So we have a contact force here. So when we're analyzing the system, um, so we're also going to have, so let's say, for instance, we're looking at object A, right? So if we're analyzing the forces acting on object A, we're going to have the usual gravitational force, normal force. If there's friction, we'll have a frictional force. And here, there's a pushing force due to the hand. Um, but in addition, we're going to have a force, a contact force that box B applies on block A. So we're going to have to worry about the motion of the whole system in this case. And the key point to solving this type of problem here, both these boxes are moving together, and therefore they have the same acceleration. And that's going to be the key in solving these problems. So some strategies for solving um, problems where objects are in contact. So first, make a diagram. Right? So we're going to sketch the situation, list knowns and unknowns, define a coordinate system. Um, now when it comes specifically to free body diagrams, you want to draw a separate diagram for each object. Right? So make sure you draw a different diagram for each object. That's going to be very helpful. Um, and make sure you identify the action reaction force pairs, right? So if object A acts on object B with the force FAB, then you want to also identify the force FBA that exerts, um, that's the force that B exerts on A. Um, just remember that these forces are going to be drawn on different diagrams, not on the same diagram. We'll talk about a little more about that in the next slide. Um, after that, you're going to apply Newton's second law um, and third law in solving these problems, right? So um, you're going to write Newton's second law in component form, probably for both the x and y directions, um, based on your free body diagrams. And you're going to, um, so in addition to the fact that the accelerations of these objects will be the same, the other thing that's going to be the same for these objects is um, the value of this action-reaction fair pair. So the force that object A applies on B is going to be the same magnitude as the force that B applies on A. Okay. And then you'll solve for whatever your unknown is from there. So I just wanted to emphasize, we want to draw a separate diagram for each object. right? And we don't need to have these objects have the same coordinate system. What's going to be helpful, though, is you call positive direction in, this, as, in the direction of um, the positive acceleration that might be a helpful um, way of solving these problems. And also, remember on the free body diagram that and on those types of diagrams, we diagram the forces acting on the object, not any other forces. So therefore, action-reaction pairs will never appear on the same diagram. right? We only analyze the forces acting on one of these objects. Another type of thing we'll be dealing with, so another form of interacting objects, is we'll be dealing with ropes. Um, so an example of this would be the image here to the right, which we have an object being pulled by a rope. Um, so it's, we have a tension force here acting to the right. Um, when it comes to ropes and strings and cables, um, we're going to be using what's called the massless stream, string approximation. And that's to say that the tension in a massless string or rope is going to be equal to the magnitude of the force pulling on the um, of end of the string or the rope, right? And this has to do with the fact that we're approximating that this the string has no mass, right? So the consequences of this is that if you pull on one end of a rope with a force f, um, the other end of the rope is going to pull on what it's attached to with the same magnitude of force f. And the other consequences of this is that the force of tension is going to be the same throughout the rope. And that's going to be helpful in solving problems. 
So um, another object we'll be seeing a lot, um, so not necessarily an object we're interacting with, but an object that's going to be in problems is a pulley. Right, so strings and ropes are often going to be passed over pulleys. Right, so if you don't know what a pulley is, um, here's an image of a pulley. So if we have a, a rope here passing over the pulley, what a pulley does is it changes the direction of the rope. Right, so here in this diagram, if we approximate the um, pulley to be a massless, then the tensions in these rope are going to be the same magnitude. So they're not the same tension force because they're going to be in different directions, but they have the same strength, the same magnitude. Now, another helpful thing, so here, let me show you this situation here. So this type of um, system is called an Atwood's machine. So an Atwood's machine, basically, we're going to have um, an object on some sort of uh, plane. It might be horizontal, it might be at an angle, and then it will be connected via rope and pulley to an object that's hanging in midair. Um, this is a very popular type of problem to solve or to be dealing with, um, and we'll be doing some of these examples in class. I would not be surprised if the AP exam had some sort of Atwood's machine problem here. Um, and so where this massless string approximation comes in here and comes in handy is that the tension throughout the rope is going to have the same force throughout the rope. I should say the same magnitude of force, same magnitude of tension. So the tension that's acting to the right on box A is going to be the same as the tension um, box B has straight up, same magnitude, not same direction, so same magnitude of tension. All right, so, so numerically those tension values are equal. Now the other key to solving these types of problems, so say the system here was moving to the right, so the magnitude of acceleration of box A is going to have the same magnitude of acceleration for box B. Right, so object A will be moving to the right here along the plane, accelerating, and it's going to be accelerating at the same rate that B is um, falling. Now one thing to note here, that this acceleration, the magnitudes are the same. Not that they have the same exact acceleration, because that would be both magnitude and direction. Right, so the strength of the acceleration is equal, but they're going to be in different directions, because the acceleration of the box A is to the right, and box B would be down. So a summary of working with ropes and pulleys, right? So if we're assuming that the ropes and strings and pulleys and are all massless and frictionless, which is pretty much what we'll be doing in all problems. Um, so and we have, if we have a force pulling on one end of the rope, then the tension in the rope is going to be equal to the magnitude of the pulling force. Um, and then if two objects are connected by a rope, the tension is going to be the same at both ends. Um, and if the rope passes over a pulley, the tension um, the magnitude of the tension in the rope is unaffected. Right, so we'll be applying these concepts to problems in class and these key ideas that with the fact with these interacting objects, we're going to have um, force pairs, which will help us identify um, variables that are equal, as well as the fact that um, acceleration, that variable, is going to be equal in objects that are interacting. And that's what I have for you tonight. All right, thank you.